Welcome back. This is the Silver Film Script Discussion Season 2, Episode 7, Part 6. Because I can count right this time. <laughs> uh, thanks for liking and sharing the videos. Thanks for watching. And thank you for subscribing. Anyway, so... It, yeah, it, it's not late. It's early in the morning over there in Great Britain, as Alex says. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. As I die of dying. So... Do you need a break to drink water? <laughs> We're good. Um, so, okay. What I do think we can intercut between is the plans for the wedding because more and more it turns out that the people they're expecting to all be there aren't going to be there. That's the easiest way for people to express outrage about the inappropriateness of the wedding. Right, because yeah. this should be a big state wedding, right? Because we had like a right. little, like like tribal wedding for for Finway and Muriel in um in episode um, two three. I, three. Two? Sorry, three. You're right. Three. three. Yeah. <coughs> um. So this should be a big state wedding, like a big ceremonial thing. Yeah, and but this is Inway's daughter. Finway mm -hmm. is king of the Noldor and Tyrion. Like, yeah, this should be a big deal. Is Ingway gonna go? Well, Ingway's going to go. There's no doubt. Is he in okay with his daughter getting married now? Right. So, so initial plan was a lavish affair, but it ends up being a small, intimate gathering. Yes. So yes, absolutely. Ingway's there. Okay. Um. Yeah. You know, so he's come around. He has to go and look grumpy. Yes. But has he come around? Because his initial well, well he trusts the Valar. Like the Valar said, it's okay. So it's okay. Okay. You know? <laughs> so I don't think he's super grumpy about it. He's maybe not like, uh, okay, all right, yeah, I guess if you say so. Um, if she'll be happy, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But he's definitely there. So he's he's going despite mixed feelings. Right. Right. Um, He'll some cry, of the Noldor are. You know. Yeah. Some of the Noldor are not going because it's. I would say scandal. I'm not. Right. And the wedding's being held in Tyrion, obviously. So it's not that it's like the Vanyar have a little bit more better of an excuse to not go. Mm -hmm. Like not that, much it, of it. Right. <clears throat> but it's a you know, it's a you know, you have to walk all the way over there. It's a ways. Um Yeah, it's a journey. Yeah. But so like they have kind of an they're they're able to get away with it. Like the ones who are like, no, this is a nah, we should they shouldn't be doing this. Can, can I want the like, Noldor oh, to sh too far away? <laughs> I want the Noldor to show the most like shock. This is not okay, and I want the I want Alway to be there. Okay. I want Alway to be supporting Finway and Ingway in a way, like he's the king of the Teleri. So well, yeah, he kind of has to be there, doesn't he? The only reason I want him there, though, is because his daughter is going to marry Indus's son. Right. And his okay. sons are going to be friends with Indus's sons. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's going to be a close family connection there, and I wanted to start yes. in this episode. So the groom section, as, as Alex is pointing out, is Owe, Feanor, Nerdanel, and that's it. Except Feanor doesn't want to be there. Right. Maybe Matan could be there because he's like Fe Fe Finway's last best buddy. Mat Matan should probably be there. <coughs> so um, I don't know. If we, do we need a groom side, bride side though? That might be a little. That's a little. Modern. Yeah, and a little modern. Um, it's the High King of the Noldor. High King. I don't really know what that means. Um, <coughs> anyway, so. But yes, the, the Vanyar are, are probably less likely to feel like the Valar are making a dumb mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in this situation, because while they may be surprised, they, they still believe, it. right, they accept the, the Valar's position. Um, they, you know, any of the, the Vanyar who don't go, it's probably more because it's not being held in their hometown. 
right. And All right, so room. I want Feanor to want to skip out on the wedding. Yes. But Nerd Mouth talks him into going. Yes. Because she says this isn't about whether or not you approve of Indus or anything like that. This is about supporting your father. Right. And your father is the king, and if you do not support him, you will lose the support of your people. Right. Like, Ooh, that's a very pragmatic reasoning. Well, Nerdinel respects him and looks up to him and wants him to be a leader of the Null. Okay. But what I'm saying is if you make it too pragmatic, I it's going to look like she's, she's gunning for the queen seat. Right. So she can start out with just saying, you need to respect, you need to support your father. This is an important thing for him. And as Fanor continues to resist it, she realizes he's going to need a pragmatic piece of advice. Then she uses that line. Right. As a, well, this will get him to do the right thing anyway. So I'll use it now. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay. And, and yeah, yes, she's level-headed, but... Um, but we don't want to make her conniving. She's not Cersei. Right. That's what I'm trying to avoid here. Um, and maybe we could show in her face that she's not, like... She's using this argument because she knows it'll work, not because she thinks that she actually thinks it's the best argument. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. I don't think she should start there. That's not the first one. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. So we get the wedding. Feanor yeah. shows up, makes faces. Mm -hmm. Rumil in financial disrepute after the failure of his script. Is in rags. No, that's not true. But. No. Rumel's going to be the, one of the people who doesn't approve. So is he going to be there or no? I mean, we might as well have him there, but is he there yeah. making a stink about it? Who can? <laughs> Indus can't be Cersei. Nerdinel can't be Cersei. Who can be Cersei? There aren't the any is, women in this story that yeah, are like the point that. Is this story doesn't have a Cersei. Like there are men, there are men who do that. There are men who act like that in Tolkien's world. There are no women who act like that. They're either all evil, like Thuringwathel or Ungolian, or they're peaches, and the best women are awesome, and they smell nice. There's one. Now there is, there's at least one exception. But this is in a very late story. This is the latest version of the tale of Turin. Uh-huh. Um, when he's with the outlaws. Yeah. He rescues a woman. Yeah, from, yes. The, the potential rape and victim, yes. And she'd been dragged off by some polygon types. Yeah. And he just kills them all to save her. Yes. She recognizes this guy is strong and he's an awesome fighter and he is where it's at. And she basically throws herself at him yeah. <laughs> For no reason other than, oh, he could protect me. So it's I, very calculated. I do not want, Rachel, I, I do not want Morwen to be a conniving character. I love the Morwen character and the scene between her in, and Hurin at the end of the Children of Turin just, oh, oh just hurts the heart. Mor it, Morwen is also not Cersei. Um. <laughs> it hurts the heart so hard. Oh, my God. I can't, I can't read that scene without choking on I can't. Ugh. All right. So does Rumel go to the wedding? Well, I mean, we just introduced him. We need to do, like, we need to do some more with him. Right. He either needs to be on screen <coughs> refusing to go, like, somewhere not at the wedding, saying, this is an outrage, I can't believe they're doing this, outside the wedding, or he needs to be at the wedding. Like, he, we have to do one or the other with him. If he goes, he needs to make a tart after dinner speech. Oh, no. <laughs> I think we've discovered a use for that mead. We're going to give it to Rumel and then give him a microphone. <laughs> Actually, I, I don't hate that idea. Um, it's not a bad idea. Um, but, yeah. And, and if, if his role is the bard of the palace and the king just got married... Yes. You'd think there would be a, an opportunity for him to address the crowd 
Yes. With his thoughts on the subject. Yeah. And it turns out to be a lot of backhanded compliments yes. <laughs> and questioning the rightness of this. And, you know, it, it's... Which catalyzes whatever outrage it is that Feyenoord directs it in this. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Rumel gives an, a floor to expressing disagreement. Does Feyenoord take advantage of this at the walk. reception? Does he what? Does he take advantage of this at the reception? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. So he's going to ruin his dad's wedding? He's only there because Nerdnell talked him into going, and he's uh -huh. the spirit of fire. If yeah. Rumel gets up and gives a very <coughs> could be interpreted negatively speech, but is cleverly worded so that he gets away with it. Yeah. The king. No, 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 no. That's true. Feanor might stand up after and say something that goes a little beyond that, yes. and it's going to be directed at Indus. Yes. Because Feanor has to ruin Indus' day as, as... So, how about Feanor gets up and gives a memorial to the Queen of the Noldor? Oh, oh. look, his mom, Muriel, about oh. how wonderful she was and how no one could feel her footstep, her, fill her place ever. Ow. <laughs> <That's terrible. laughs> okay, I really just horrified you and Alex, so we have to do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you 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 are hurtless. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Clearly I am not a person that you invite to weddings. <laughs> I well, I mean, I don't intend to have any more, but you're clearly not invited to any of them. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> oh gosh. Anyway, so <laughs> Ritual is freaking out right now. <laughs> um, if someone objects to it, that's fine. It's 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 a, you're allowed to object to this. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, if, if that's definitely our act break, as uh, as Alex said, that no one is allowed to object. Alex says. <laughs> well, the reason I'm looking for someone to object is because Brian's not here, and he's usually really good at shooting down things by saying, "Well, that's a stupid idea." <laughs> So without him around, like, I don't know if these are all stupid ideas. <laughs> well, th don't worry. If I think, if it's a stupid idea, I'll fight it. I, I just won't say that's a stupid idea. I'll be like, know, well, what if we do this? <laughs> yeah. He's I, very I to the that, point. Um, <laughs> I do think it is a great idea, actually. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. I kind of feel bad for Indus, though. <laughs> yeah, of course. All right. So, so, this will, so this would be the point where the audience would choose sides. Yeah. Once Feanor is this much of a jerk to Indus, yes, they're not going to be on his side anymore. Like he's just stepped over that line. Up to this point, people could be like, "Yeah, why is Indus doing what she's doing?" You know, they right. might understand Feanor's point of view till this point. All right. So this is this is that's the end of Act Three then. How yeah. Okay, so <coughs> that's okay. We're 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 getting stuff done in time. It would definitely grab our viewers' attention. Ritual says, "Yeah." Um, for all oh, those people who are like, "This is a happy story." Um, are are Feanor and Nerdinell married yet? I'm I'm gonna go with no. Okay, so because, that needs to happen in Act Four. Yes. <coughs> so so Nerdinell is at the wedding as Feanor's girlfriend. Yeah. Okay. And well, and, and Matan's there, so she, you know, she's she, there with her father. Yeah. Okay. So it's not. It's not super weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because the whole girlfriend idea is, can Indus? No, no, no. I, I, I want to see Indus decidedly not ruining Feanor's wedding. Indus has the personality who can <laughs> rise above something like that and yes. not retaliate. Feanor is about gonna, retaliation. Is this yes, cool yes, and yes, I, I agree. Well, here's the thing. I would like to see Feanor insisting that she not be there. And maybe Finway brings her anyway. Yes, okay. 
Which ruins Feanor's wedding in his mind. Right. <laughs> but Indus has every right to be there. So, yeah, I see. Okay. But we're, we're kind of painting ourselves into a corner here, though. Oh. Uh, because here's the problem. This basically ruins... Uh, what's her name's? <coughs> Nerdanel's day. Nerdanel doesn't mind Indus being there. Uh, and- no, uh, yes, but if Feanor is a snit the entire time... Uh, I'm pretty sure Nerdanel can get him to forget about Indus. Okay, that's a fair point. <laughs> She's having a great day. <laughs> okay. okay. Here, it, but we're we're gonna have a problem because we need to have this devolve into into some kind of major confrontation. That, as Alex says. Is oh, and we've not shown his apprentice. No, I'm well, that's, that's I'm fair thinking this in act four, right? Right, so what I'm saying is that the apprenticeship Fe- Feanor moves out and into Matan's house, mm-hmm. and he's learning from Matan. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I definitely want to see Matan showing him how to make a sickle. Mm-hmm. Um, I've already discussed my, my, my thoughts on that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so does this mean that we're having the Feanor no, and Feanor, wedding be... I don't think Finway picks Feanor out. Feanor chooses to go live with Matan because that's where the workshop is and that's where he wants to be. Feanor does what he wants. Yeah. <coughs> I don't, I don't think... Finway get a vote. Yes, I don't think Finway is going is is going to kick him out. I think I think he might be thinking about it, and maybe Feanor beats him to it because hmm. Feanor is not about it. Like when I was, Feanor's not going to share a house with Finway in this. That's true. Um, so at what, the after the wedding, the aftermath of the Finway in this wedding is Feanor goes to hang out with Matan's group. <laughs> There's got to be some consequence from Muriel Gate. Well, okay. <coughs> um, yes. <laughs> so what we could do with that is that Finway could like bring Feanor in to like deliver some kind of some kind of sanctions to Feanor. Mm-hmm. And Feanor basically beats him to the punch and says, I'm leaving. I'm, no, I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm not putting up with this. When I, <coughs> um, when I, was, when I was more youthful, um, any time that my, that my parents tried to make some kind of ultimatum, like, you need to do this thing mm-hmm. or you can't stay here, my response was always, I'm not going to stay here then even if the thing was good for me i just couldn't you know i mean and people wonder why i relate to feanor (coughs) yeah i i see that being a very feanor reaction in the situation so i think he should do it yeah and this should be the beginning of act four Mm -hmm. is feanor moves out and goes to be in matan's workshop and be matan's apprentice and that's what his role is is matan's apprentice not nerdnell's husband yes I agree. But he basically just moved into his, his girlfriend's, girlfriend's house, yes. which, which is what Indus did to Finway at the beginning of the episode. Uh-huh. So this, this, this ties together well. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have some learning how to make a sickle, and um, probably some gems are getting made there because Noldor like to make their gems. And, right. and Nerdanel is going to have to talk to him about what happened yes. at the wedding. Yes. Before she agrees to marry him. Yeah. <coughs> because, because at this point, she's seen what he can do as right. being a hothead. Yes. Because she didn't have an opportunity to talk him off the ledge that time. Right. So, what is 
Feanord going to say to Nerdenau to convince her that that was a one-off thing and really it's all fine? Really. Well, he's a good speaker, so he can talk himself out of this. But okay, 